Hello, this is Dr. Kessler. This is uh, our lecture uh, on logic models. Um, last week we discussed the concept of strategy in an organization. Uh, we've also uh, discussed the concept of outcome-oriented goals and objectives. Uh, and we've also discussed performance measures. So this lecture is, um, is discussing the um, importance of developing a visual aid to show all the critical parts of long-range uh, strategy in an organization. So we'll uh, go through the idea of uh, how to depict the contents of a strategic plan using a logic model. Uh, first, we'll discuss the logic model definition, how they're used, how they're developed. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the need to uh, to design a logic model uh, to meet the specific needs, including variations for what you're trying to do with a logic model, and then challenges in developing uh, one that's useful and believable. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, diagramming the logic of a program or organization, uh, we can appreciate the fact that logic models uh, really are useful for many purposes. Uh, in one case, uh, an agency head was so excited about his visual uh, tool that he actually took it to uh, Capitol Hill, met with his funding uh, um, co congressional committees, and showed them the logic model and got them excited and enthusiastic about continuing to fund the strategies that were depicted in the logic model. So they really can be very useful and they can create a lot of enthusiasm and excitement for what an organization is trying to do. Uh, so we can use logic models for planning, as we're working on in this class. Uh, we can also use them for program evaluation. You come back later and ask if a program is achieving what it was put in place to achieve or what it's trying to achieve. And we can use it for budgeting as well to, to sort of justify or rationalize uh, the uh, budget requirements for coming fiscal years. So we can use it for a lot of different purposes. Uh, recognize, as we've sort of uh, said before, that every program uh, that's trying to uh, achieve some level of success and some degree of outcomes uh, uh, really depends on having the right strategies in place to do so. Uh, and so a logic model is a very effective tool for communicating the strategies and illustrating the cause and effect relationship, the causes um, being the strategies and the effect being the outputs and outcomes, uh, and, and to tell the story of an organization or program. A logic model gets everyone on the same page regarding what the organization is doing and why without having to see a wall of words, a 20-page document or a 12-page document. So it's a nice uh, tool. It's a storytelling tool. It's a communication tool. It uh, causes everyone to sort of see things uh, that, that are being done and to be able to see their role in getting it done. Uh, they're really developed uh, uh, during the planning phase uh, and then used later for evaluation. So we can come back and say, did we do what we said? Uh, are our strategies working? Uh, when we spent the money and we did the activities, uh, did the re desired re results, outcomes get achieved. So a logic model is an illustration of linkages between the inputs of an organization, the activities that it conducts, the outputs that it produces, the things that go out of stores, and the outcomes that those outputs uh, cause. Uh, it represents action theory, uh, what is invested, what is done, and what results occur. And it communicates where the program is going, how the program is going to get there, and when it expects to arrive at that destination, when it expects to achieve its goals. Um, program logic models, um, uh, we use the uh, details from the plan to develop our logic model. And you've been uh, listening to various lectures about coming up with goals and objectives, developing strategies, uh, formulating performance measures. And so you need to have those pieces in place before you can develop your visual tool. But once you do this, once you've done that, that part of planning, you can develop the logic model for the programs. And you can include the activities, the outputs, the immediate outcomes, the, the intermediate outcomes, and ultimately the long-term results. You can also include external factors, as you'll see in a second. Uh, we can determine where the published measures reside within the logic model, our performance measures. Uh, we can ask ourselves how well are the strategies and the measures 
uh, support the goals. And because we've got everything sort of depicted on sort of a one-page diagram, we can ask ourselves if something's missing, if this all, if the logic of, of what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to do so is, is sound and whether there are any gaps or holes. Uh, we can use logic models to assess uh, performance results. Uh, we can um, review the logic models, uh, ask ourselves uh, uh, the, uh, how well we've achieved what we intended to achieve. Uh, we can also use them to make sure that all the participants understand the logic of the program um, before we uh, begin to discuss the details of our performance information. So there's lots of uses for logic models. Um, one of the uh, things we've talked about this semester is this idea of activities, outputs, and outcomes. And uh, ultimately, uh, the best kind of a, a success measure or a success point is the ultimate result or the ultimate outcome. And what this uh, concentric circle diagram shows you is when outputs leave our organization, like if we issue advice orders or court judgments or if we sell products or if we deliver services, the things that we do that go out the, of the organization based on, on the use of our resources, uh, the first circle uh, identifies, well, what's the immediate effect of that? Well, so someone purchases the product and uses it. And so then what's the next immediate effect? Well, after they use it, uh, they realize that uh, it's uh, making them look better or be smarter or uh, run faster or whatever. And so, well, then because we run faster, then we have better self-esteem. And so you can see how when you walk down the logic model um, uh, cascade of outputs and outcomes, you can walk yourself all the way out to the ultimate outcomes that your organization is in place to achieve, its main thing, whether that's an improved quality of life in the public sector or whether that's a, a, a high degree of satisfaction in, with the products or services in the private sector. So logic models uh, really need to be developed and we need to be uh, think sort of deeply about uh, what our organization does in the world and the ripple effects that it has all the way out to the ultimate result. Now, having asked students to do logic models in the past, uh, very often the students like to glom onto the one that you're seeing on your screen now, which is really a basic logic model. Um, the, the downside of this logic model is still a wall of words. It's not very appealing or exciting, but it works, right? It's got the resources that we're going to consume uh, into activities. Uh, the activities are going to produce outputs. The outputs are going to produce short-term and long-term outcomes. And those uh, long, short and long-term outcomes are going to ultimately have an impact. And so you can look at all of the different examples uh, in this particular uh, uh, diagram that you're seeing here. But also appreciate that this is not visually as exciting or appealing as some of the others that you're about to see. But it does work. It's a basic logic model. Uh, when we uh, talked earlier about um, uh, you having a diagram to discuss with our investors, we also use this diagram here to suggest um, that in fact, uh, a, for our new program, we weren't going to receive any outputs until year two and no outcomes uh, and, and significant impact until year three and beyond. And so this is an example of a visual diagram, a logic model, if you will, of the inputs, the activities, the outputs, the outcomes, and the impact. And it also sort of shows sort of a time phasing of when uh, things will be realized and it uses a little bit of color to show that there's no, no outcomes in the first year of the program, the outcomes start to get realized in year three. This is, uh, uh, now we're getting into more visual, visually appealing and colorful logic models. Uh, this is an example of a, of a logic model that shows the inputs and the outputs and the outcomes, uh, and uh, it has arrows and it has boxes and colors. It also has other information included. If you look at the bottom, it has assumptions uh, about inputs and outputs, and it has external factors that could also influence the outcomes. Recall that in the performance measurement discussion, I said uh, some uh, managers and employees are afraid uh, to be held accountable to outcomes because uh, they don't completely control them. They only control activities and outputs. Uh, but in fact, if you're using, uh, if your organization is in place to create outcomes, and somebody has to say, to what extent are we influencing those outcomes? And those external factors at the bottom here uh, could indicate uh, the other things that influence 
uh, outcomes occurring that could cause them not to achieve the targets that we set. Uh, this is another uh, great example. This is the one I mentioned where the agency head was so excited that he took this diagram to Capitol Hill and used it uh, to convince Congress to fund his agency uh, in, a, in a greater way because he was going to reduce recidivism uh, amongst uh, people who were paroled and people who were on probation. Recidivism meaning uh, uh, recommitting crimes and going back into the system. And so this uh, great diagram shows two organizations, a pretrial services agency and a community supervision agency. It shows uh, at the top a little discussion of those agencies. It has the goals listed as di diamonds. Uh, then it has uh, the uh, conditions or the situation, program strategy and funding, and then it has all the things in these little blue boxes that will occur because of the strategy and the funding. And then on the far right hand side, it's all of the things that can be expected when this, these things in the middle occur. And so it's a very dynamic, very exciting diagram. So if you're going to develop a diagram in this class, a diagram like this would be much better than that wall of words that we saw a couple of slides back. Uh, this is a diagram uh, that I developed for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Uh, it discusses on the far left side the situation, uh, the challenges that the organization faces, uh, and it notes that, that more needs to be done, especially in the areas on the bottom left, uh, construction fatalities, transportation fatalities, workplace violence, ergonomics, etc. And so then because of the situation, it lists the outcomes that it want, the agency wants to achieve. You can see that as a goal one, goal two, and goal three. And then you can see the strategies listed as sort of staircase uh, in the middle right. Uh, and then ultimately you can see the results or the benefits on the far right that are expected to occur. So again, a different version, visual, uh, compelling, interesting, listed entire strategic plans with the content uh, in one diagram. Uh, a agency that's uh, in place to uh, help uh, with the intense, intense poverty in Appalachia is the Appalachian Regional Commission. Uh, this was their strategic plan. Uh, their mission is listed at the top. Uh, the challenges are listed here in yellow. Uh, the goals and outcomes they want to achieve are listed across the center uh, middle in terms of job opportunities, capacity for Appalachia to compete for jobs and economic uh, gain, infrastructure in Appalachia, and, and a big part of uh, federal emphasis was the highway system through Appalachia. And so uh, as you drop down, you see the objectives and the strategies that are going to be uh, achieved. Uh, there um, are some measures in the middle blue boxes uh, in terms of how these, uh, these goals and these strategies will be measured. Uh, this one is uh, not quite as colorful, but it has the same kind of information. International Society for Technology and Education, or ISTE, uh, had a mission. It was facing a number of challenges. Uh, it identified uh, some key goals that it wanted to achieve and the strategies for doing so. And then at the bottom, uh, indicators or ways to measure uh, progress were included as well. This is the State Department Agency, uh, International Narcotics and Law Enforcement. Uh, their diagram to address the Andean Counter Narcotics Initiative, uh, Colombia and, and, and other similar South American countries that are you know, intensely involved in uh, drug trafficking and uh, in, um, drug cartels. Uh, and so this lists the conditions. Uh, it lists uh, three, three areas of emphasis, counter narcotics, uh, anti-crime or crime fighting, and economic and social development. In, in, as their strategic goals. Uh, it lists the annual goals. And, and again, you, you, I mentioned earlier that we customize the plan to meet the needs of the organization. So you can see uh, when you get to the annual area, the, the, the breakdown of counter narcotics crime and economic social development, you see interdiction, eradication, stabilization, civilian law enforcement, criminal justice, and alternative development, alternatives to drugs. Uh, and so you can see performance measures included as well. So again, uh, you can sort of see what this looks like. Now this diagram was developed for a science organization. The science organization said, uh, we don't do things in a linear way. Science is not linear. And so we developed this. Now what you see here uh, for National Cancer Institute is one of uh, 150 cancers. This was the breast cancer. Uh, we also did prostate and brain tumor. And uh, for uh, in this area, uh, what you see in these different cells 
the areas that have color, like the yellows and the oranges and the greens and the purples, were areas where, uh, because of peer reviews, we knew that knowledge was good, uh, that there was a lot of uh, uh, awareness and knowledge in these particular areas. But we also asked them, well, you know, if we really were going to uh, completely uh, resolve breast cancer, uh, what are all the areas that need to be addressed? And the areas that you see that are not colored in are areas that are unknown, uh, are not being funded, not being researched, et cetera. And so this logic model is very useful for this agency, which gives grants, to figure out where grants need to be given. And so uh, extremely useful and powerful. Uh, was very well received by the science people at National Cancer Institute. Um, as you can see by the examples, uh, as I mentioned, logic models are adjusted to meet the user needs. Uh, there are challenges in developing logic models, uh, being able to link the activities to the outputs to the outcomes. Uh, you know, you can use the uh, concentric circle diagram that I showed you earlier. Uh, also, developing the relationship between immediate outcomes, you know, what, what occurs immediately, and then because that occurs, what occurs, and then ultimately, what's the big benefit here? And again, it's that concentric diagram sort of concept. As you think about uh, how programs impact the world around them. And this is private sector, public sector, and not for profit. It doesn't matter where you are. All organizations have an impact. Uh, and what is that impact? And we have to sort of tease that out. And then the other uh, difficulty uh, you saw in the science example is that programs, uh, some programs don't see themselves as linear. Um, the, uh, um, this particular slide says uh, linking activities and outputs to outcomes uh, is difficult, just like I was saying. And this one is kind of cute because it's a cartoon. And in the middle it says, and then a miracle occurs. Uh, and I think the, uh, the one guy is saying to the other guy, uh, that miracle occurs uh, isn't good enough. You have to be more specific. Uh, so we set out to, uh, to discuss logic models. It's a fairly short lecture. But I hope it's meaningful and powerful for you because um, being able to develop the uh, goals and the objectives and performance measures and you get down into a lot of detail. And this brings us back up into a, sort of a, a diagram of all the moving parts and being able to see what an organization is all about, what it's going to do, uh, how it's going to be successful. And so developing logic models is a very useful skill and tool. Now, we talked about logic model definitions. We talked about how we use logic models. Uh, we talked about how to develop, how they're developed in general, and I showed you the concentric circles diagram to help you sort of map these, these, these linkages. Uh, we talked about variations because uh, different people want to see things in a different way. Um, and we talked about challenges in developing uh, believable logic models. Uh, and I think uh, you got the idea here. Uh, one thing I'll say, and I mentioned this before, uh, if your strategic plan for your whole organization is very outcome oriented, you, you, many of you might say, but when do we get to solve our people problems, or our communication problems, or our leadership problems? Well, there's, there's a lot of subordinate strategic plans that link to the main strategic plan. There's an administrative strategic plan. There's a human resources strategic plan. There's an information technology strategic plan. And in these strategic plans, uh, we uh, do the same kind of things we've been talking about, but we, we do them in the context of if we're going to achieve the outcomes talked about in the main strategic plan, then we need to address these administrative issues. Or we need to, to, to our HR needs to support it in this way. Or our information technology needs to support it in this way. So uh, appreciate and recognize that logic models work at the high level of the organization, but they also work for these subordinate but aligned uh, strategic plans in support areas as well. Uh, I hope this has been useful. Uh, we'll continue talking about strategic plan implementation next time and monitoring and ongoing uh, verification of the strategic plan progress. Uh, so this is the end of the logic models lecture and we'll continue on with our next lecture.